All right, guys, so Yumi is actually the perfect e-girl champion where you can AFK, but also be very useful at the same time. Something very interesting about Yumi is the fact that she has the ability to go completely untargetable, which is the first time Riot's actually introducing this into a champion, though I promise you guys, you're gonna love her. Yumi is an extremely annoying enchanter support that provides tons of peel, scales really well into late game, and has great playmaking potential. She is extremely annoying to play against, and something cool about her is a beginner can play her, and a master has a lot of potential to have a high skill cap playing her as well. So if I were to boil down Yumi's playstyle, I would say it's a combination of Lulu, Rakan, and Sona, and they're all combined into a Teemo-like champion. Looks like figure thing. So pros when it comes to playing Yumi are you are gonna be very hard to take down and you have the ability to hyper buff slash heal the person you are attached to. And you guys are gonna be surprised when I say this, but early on, she's not the greatest, but come mid to late game, she will blow your mind. Something that is very often overlooked is the fact that when she's attached to somebody, she gives a whole lot of adaptive force, which means either ability power or attack damage, whichever they have more of. And it helps out a whole lot and something people completely overlook, like I said. So Yumi is a master of a few supportive qualities that is amazing to have in a support, such as enhancing, peeling, hunting people down, but is lacking a few as well that we're gonna dive right into. Cons, the first one I wanna mention is your team is going to be playing a 4v5 for the first 10 to 15 minutes. Landing phase, I kid you not, your AD carry is gonna be excited. Oh my God, yay, we have a Yumi on our team. And then soon he's gonna realize the fact that you were gonna tank zero damage for him in lane and it's completely up to him to soak damage, deal damage. It's, it's gonna be pretty rough early on, not gonna lie. On top of all of that, for the few times she's actually targetable, She's very, very squishy, so it's not even much of a difference like she's already on top of your head, untargetable. And to go along with that, she is extremely unforgiving when she's looking for vision control, mainly without an ally nearby. She literally needs a babysitter at all times. So, ability rundown. Let's start with her passive. It's literally called bop and block, and it means exactly what it says. You bop somebody, you gain a shield, get some mana back, and you can also latch onto your teammate to provide that shield to them. And I personally think this is gonna be something that separates bad Yumi players from good Yumi players. Just use it as much as possible when you can. So her Q is basically a heat seeking missile and it's perfect for poke and hunting people down. The only downside is there's no AOE, but it slows a whole lot. And this is the first ability that is introduced that actually follows your cursor when using it. And when it comes to the Q, you're kind of going to want to learn how to throw curveballs because it has to be in air for a short amount of time in order for it to become empowered, which does more damage and does the actual slowing. The W, it is called you and me. Notice her name, it's called Yumi. Pretty hilarious, I know, but let's give you the rundown. For starters, her Q is a completely different ability whether she's latched onto an ally or not. If she isn't, it's a straight projectile, pretty useless. Once she hops on somebody's back, that's where it becomes the heat seeking missile. And keep in mind, this is ability you're gonna start with level one without even skilling up anything. And as you latch onto someone, that's where you're gonna get the adaptive bonus percentage AP or AD to you and your ally you're attached to. When it comes to the W, this is what I meant earlier by you need a babysitter at all times. Make sure you have a babysitter nearby so you do not die instantly. So you can actually get pretty tricky when it comes to this ability. Let's say, you have a giant skill shot coming at you, you can juke it by simply just hopping right on because it costs zero mana and the cooldown's pretty freaking low. So Yumi's a very basic champion, but has a lot of interactions that make her very complex at the same time. I don't know, it's kind of weird. So her E, Zoomies. This actually has charges very similar to Tima ult. You get two of them and it will heal you and shield you. It's gonna heal you if you're not attached it'll heal your ally if you are attached. And this speed does not stack, so you don't wanna double smash your heal when you wanna run fast. You wanna space it out and using it strategically, whether you want to heal or speed up. It kinda of works similar to Teemo Shrooms, how it charges up and you can use them however you like. So her ultimate final chapter, basically it's seven Sona ults of doom, but the way this works is once an enemy gets hit by three of these waves, they are going to be rooted and each one deals damago, aka damage. 
and you can move around while using this ultimate. All right, so the magical cat, AKA Yumi, you're pretty much always gonna want summoner airy. It's literally just too good. And when it comes to the first rune, I'm gonna give you guys some options and the reasoning, and you guys can kind of choose what you want behind it. Mana flow band, pretty dank. Gonna help a lot with your mana issues. Nimbus cloak, it's gonna speed you up with your ult, but a lot of the time you're gonna be attached. So however you think you see fit. Next, probably between Absolute Focus and Transcendence. Whether what your build is going to be that game, Transcendence could come in clutch, but you're going to be above 70% of the health most of the time, so Absolute Focus is not bad at all. And last but not least, Scorch or Gathering Storm are going to be the two. If you want more harass in lane, obviously go Scorch. If you're looking for that late game power, Gathering Storm is the way to go. So for the second tree, I like to take inspiration and these are the four you're going to be looking at. First, magical footwear. Second, perfect timing. Third, biscuit delivery. Fourth, cosmic insight. The one I like to go with the most are probably perfect timing and cosmic insight. So keep that in mind and choose whichever one best fits your playstyle. And bottom three, you're going to be looking at adaptive, adaptive, and bonus health. And for builds, there's gonna be two paths you guys can go down. The first one, it's more of a kind of more supporty, less of a AP carry-ish kind of style. So this is gonna be what you're looking at. And if you wanna venture in over to the carry higher on the AP side to improve your ratios, this is gonna be what you're looking at. And notice how that dark seal slash Magi's is in there because like I said, you are so hard to kill. Take use of that. So for combos, the very obvious one is having your heat seeking missile while you're W. And keep in mind, it gets empowered after it's been in the air for a while. So don't shoot it straight at them. Kind of curveball it. Go off to the left, hit them. Go off to the right, smack them. Something like this. Your ultimate. Launch this bad boy out and use your W to help reposition to hit as many of those waves as you can. And this combo is actually pretty funny because I made an AD Yumi video just because of how good this is. You literally just detach, drop an auto, get a shield, get even more autos. Once they start going on you, pop back on your ally and become untargetable once more. And another very weird one to get used to is you can Q as you're maneuvering the Q around with your mouse. You can hop on to other allies to increase your range, change your distance, hit that shot you couldn't have hit staying on that one ally. Pretty interesting. Early game, your team is going to completely hate you. I swear to God, it feels like you're playing a 4v5 with this champion. All right, I'm just being deadly, d dead honest. This is mainly because a lot of supports have value in soaking damage, and this champion does absolutely none of that. She's untargetable, and your AD carries 1v2. So that being said, keep in mind, you cannot auto attack if you're latched onto your ally. So don't actually be AFK the whole game. Keep keep this in mind. <laughs> but as the game goes on, Yumi ramps up so well once you start grouping up a little more and especially late game team fights. But mid game, this is when you start to come online and your abilities really start to show off. And like I said, group fights equals Yumi's dream. She will make the enemy's life a nightmare. She is untargetable and as you start to group up, she has even more allies to latch onto and make it impossible to kill. And she does a perfect job of hunting people down with her Q and slowing them, or running away and dropping peels and heals. And as you get onto late game, it makes your allies late game monsters because of the whole adaptive attachment interaction. So keep this in mind and be as annoying as possible. Here's an example of how annoying you can actually be and how strong you make yourself and your ally. Tips in mind when playing Yumi. The very obvious one is the fact that you do give more AD or ability power. Hop onto them so that ult just packs an even bigger punch. Another very important thing to keep in mind. When you're attached, you are not forever not dead. Okay, that's not how it works. If you hit somebody on a tower while you're attached with your Q, you're taking aggro. It looks weird. You're really tiny. Hard to see your health bar, but just keep it in mind. You will die. I've died many times. So please keep that in mind. <laughs> So when it comes to Yumi, I don't think she actually has enough CC to be the primary CC for her team. 
I think she works really well when paired up with other champions that provide a lot of crowd control just because she works really well as a follow-up. Alrighty, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully a lot of these Yumi's tips and tricks came in handy. Um, if you'd smack a like on this bad boy, I'd appreciate it. And continue to check out the Pro Guides channel as well as mine. It'll all be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Peace out.